wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen. Sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yambagi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma aftah alayna aftuh al-arifin. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana ya Allah. Uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ashabi kan nujum bi ayyuhum muhtadaytum muqtadaytum Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was praising his companions and he said about them my companions are like the stars whichever of them you follow you will be rightly guided So our true happiness in this life is to have a good love relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his Habib Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with the Holy Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put special light in our hearts when we love him this light will direct us during ease it will direct us during hardship it will make us follow the light, follow the manners of the Messenger of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And with this, with this light, love itself will have another meaning. And subhanAllah, last week uh, we we uh, we talked about one of the female companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we want to love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the same way his companions loved him and focusing on the love of women around Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we saw last week that Fatima bint Asad radiyallahu anha, who was the wife of Prophet Muhammad, uh, of the wife of uh, Prophet Muhammad's uncle, uh, about whom Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, she is my mom after my mom. And we saw how much she loved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We saw how much she, she uh, showed her love to him when he was living with them after the death of his grandfather. And we know that his uncle brought him to live with him in his house. And she was a true mom to him, Fatima radiallahu anha. She showed how much she cared about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She showed how much she loved him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we talked a lot about her last week, but in, uh, in return to this love, we, we saw how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on her death, at this uh, bed, she, he, gave, he gave them his shirt to be used as one, one piece of her shroud. So we saw his love to her when he laid in her grave. We saw how much he cried after for her, for her when she died. And today, inshallah, we will we will talk about uh, another companion. About uh, we will talk about the first female nurse, the first female surgeon in Islam. Can you guess what her name is? She is Rufayda al-Aslamiyya. Radiyallahu anha. So Rufayda accepted Islam early, very early. And she was one of the Ansar women who welcomed Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Upon his arrival uh, to Medina, which was her hometown. 
And many accounts of her life describe her as notably kind, patient, empathetic, all of which, uh, all of which shine through Rufaida's radiallahu anha, her consistent acts of service. So what's so special about Rufaida radiallahu anha? As I just mentioned, she was the first nurse and the first surgeon in Islam. She started, she, she started her path in medicine uh, by learning from and assisting her father, who was, uh, whose name was Saad al-Aslami. Her father was a physician. And she was specially known for stabilizing patients and uh, ensuring their proper, proper hygiene in preparation for more invasive procedures. So Rufaida radiallahu anha provided expert level care while continuously referring, uh, refraining and uh, uh, broadening, broadening her skills through hands-on field work. So she was very active, uh, actually, uh, on site. So eventually, uh, Rufayda radiallahu anha, she courageously took her expertise, of course, to the battlefield. So she learned all what she learned from her father, from uh, her father who was a physician, and she practiced all that she learned. So she used to go with the army to the battlefield, and uh, she always cared for, uh, for injured soldiers during the battles. Uh, uh, and she participated in many, many uh, battles, including uh, the Battle of uh, Al Khandaq, the Battle uh, of Khaybar, and, and so on. So let's take the Battle of Al Khaybar, where she shined on that day. Uh, at the end, at the end of the battle. Uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so impressed with Rufaida's medical nursing work, uh, which he which he provided, uh, and um, uh, during that battle, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam assigned her a share of the bounty equivalent to that of the soldier's share, and that was just a way uh, of thanking her, a way of appreciating all that she did for the soldiers, for the injured soldiers. Now imagine, imagine uh, being recognized and empowered and encouraged by the greatest of mankind, by Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine that you are doing your job and Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is watching you and he is happy with the way you are doing your work. He saw that you are sincere. He saw that you are careful about your time. He saw that you are careful that all the money you are gaining, all the, all the salary, everything is halal, pure halal. So this is how uh, uh, we, we should uh, be faithful to our jobs, to our work. So what happened? Uh, once the war and uh, the battles came to an end, uh, she was permitted by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to maintain what, uh, what was essentially a small clinic in a tent situated inside Masjid al-Nubawi. Imagine. Imagine how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was happy 
with her that he gave her this honor. So she was recognized and she was encouraged by him. He allowed her to have the, the, the clinic inside the Masjid al-Nabawi. And this, of course, allowed Rufayr anha to continue providing the medical care and also to train more women as nurses. This is a novel uh, uh, way of helping patients. Nurses, doctors do the procedures, but nurses follow up. And their work is very highly, it's so important. It's so important. So, Rufayda radiallahu anha trained women as nurses. So, she, she sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mashallah, yani, uh, she was amazing. She took very good care of the trainings and of the patients. So Rufayda, her unwavering devotion to caring for others is remarkable. So this is an important message. And we said from since last time that when we talk about these companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we recognize important aspects of them, of their lives, we are pointing these points out so that they would be as models for us. So these incidents, these characteristics, these remarkable things in them will be our inspiration to follow their footsteps so when she she when when rufayda radiallahu anha was uh, uh, training she was doing her amazing job but when she was not working as a nurse what did she do she pursued social work and advocated for muslims in need so she continuously served her community while serving her faith. Served the community. What are we doing for our community? Are we volunteering to help those responsibles, responsible people in our communities? Are we offering to help them? Are we offering to do anything for our community? What are we doing? How are we helping each other? How are we helping in providing the good example for everybody? So we have to continuously serve our community. Is there a Sunday school we have to help? Is there... Uh, any any uh, need for any type of volunteering work for our community centers, we have to help. So we have we have to help the, our community, and this, in fact, would be a true applying for the teachings of our faith. We have to be like uh, uh, one body. So we help each other. Now we have we have to stop here again for a second. The aim of this series here is to show what these women around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did they do? so that their names is being kept and preserved and is mentioned now after 14, 14 centuries. What did they do? So the aim of this series is to urge women to be productive, 
the same way that those women around Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi were productive. Women have the capabilities to impact our world, to help, to care, to serve. And they can do so by imitating those female companions who had the blessings uh, of, of being around Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he was, uh, he was Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at their work. He admired their work and he helped them go on with their work. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we just mentioned, had the uh, had approved for Rufaida to have to have a clinic inside Al Masjid al Nubawi. It was a way of helping, a way of approving to uh, uh, to uh, um, uh, to Rukiya. Um, so this to Rufaida that he is approving her work. He loved what he what she what she did, and he helped her. So, subhanallah, this this thing shows that women have to be productive. Women have to help. Women have to show their talents. Now, ah. Uh, Women around the Prophet وسلم, they were remarkable. And we want to be uh, we want to be able to raise women who are like those uh, examples. We want to show, we want to raise women who are helpful, supportive creative, uh, uh, who, uh, who fulfill the, uh, uh, the orders and the legislations of our faith in all aspects. So women are strong. And this is what we need. We need to raise a community, we need to raise a group of women who, who are good, who, whom Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, will be proud of on the day of judgment. And we all know, and we all uh, feel so happy to talk about Khadija radiyallahu anha. the mother of the believers, Sayyida Khadija, uh, who was the wife of Sayyida Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was the first Muslim woman to, uh, uh, and, the, and the first human being to believe in Sayyida Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So again, now we moved from talking about Rufayda radiyallahu anha, to talking about the mother of the believers, Sayyida Khadija radiyallahu anha. So we saw how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa admired the work of Rufayda radiyallahu anha. Now we want to see what happened with Khadija radiyallahu anha. And we all know the stories on and on and on. Everyone have talked about Khadija radiyallahu anha. Everyone knows how Khadija radiallahu anha supported Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know how uh, she first heard about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's really a very interesting story. One day, and that was of course before Islam, a group of the novel uh, women of Quraysh were uh, 
gathered close to uh, the Kaaba and they were chit-chatting and uh, they were talking and they saw someone coming closer to them and he, he when he got uh, to them, he said to them, Oh, Nisa Utaima, Ya Nisa Utaima, all the ladies of, of Taima. Uh, this is how he called them. They are of Taima. There will be a prophet coming soon. And it is said that this prophet will be will be from Quraysh from this tribe and this prophet will be revealed to with the message of Allah so any one of you who could who could get married to him let her do it so he wanted them, he wanted at least one of them to get married to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the ladies heard him, some of them just laughed at him. Some of them uh, just uh, said bad words to him. And some of them even took uh, a stone, pebbles, some pebbles and threw them again uh, at him. Except for one lady out of this group, she was uh, just listening to that man. And she was thinking about that man. And she was thinking about what he said. And she did not do anything of what her friends did or what she did not do anything of what they did. And that wise woman was Khadija radiallahu anha. At that day, she did not know that she will have that honor and that blessing that she will be the wife of the Prophet. She didn't know that. She was known as very wise generous and novel she was married her uh, her husband passed away she got married again and also got married uh, her husband uh, passed away so she was just uh taking care of her children and she was a very successful businesswoman and she would uh, send caravans to Sham for trading. So this businesswoman heard of someone who is very trustful, very trustworthy, and she hired him. She said, I heard about how honest you are, and I want you to take my, uh, this caravan to Sham to, for trading. And uh, she sent her boy, Maysara, to, uh, to be with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, at that time, she didn't know anything. And she, there wasn't a prophet. There was no one. So Maysara, radiallahu an, when uh, he experienced the miracles that happened to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and why on their way, a monk asked me, Sarah, who is this person? Hey, Sarah, who is this person? None at all who, uh, who rested under this tree. Oh. 
that was a good, a good uh, miracle, a good thing that may Sarah have seen. And of course, we know all the uh, um, all the stories that happened along the way and everything that happened when along the way and how how they traded and they got so much profit and they went back. So when they went back, Khadija radiallahu anha heard all the stories from Maisara and she was very happy. And of course, she told uh, her her friend about uh, about him, and she said, "Okay, why you don't get married to him?" She said, "How can I get married to him?" She said, "Okay, I will send, I will send uh, that person." So uh, I would send to him, and of course, Subhanallah, this uh, marriage happened, and we all know, uh, we all know how. Uh, how happy Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, was uh, with this marriage with Khadija radiallahu anha and how happy she was with him. And she got all his children radiallahu anha. So subhanallah, and we know how the uh, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam started to uh, to uh, come to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what happened to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how he went back to, to his wife and he was so trembling so so scared and she told, he told her what happened and she confirmed that that he is she, says, she said to him words very very confidently she said Wallahi ma yukhzika Allahu abada Allah will not let you down so what happened to you is something great. And she knew that. She knew that there will be a prophet. She had the feeling, but she didn't say anything. Of course, she she just comforted him and uh, got him uh, so uh, calm. And then she took him to Warqa, her, her cousin. And he told him that this is a namusul akbar. This is the same uh, uh, way that... Uh, Allah will send to prophets. So Khadija radiallahu anha was with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know how much he suffered from Quraysh and how much she supported him. And uh, there were so many events that happened and Khadija radiallahu anha was witnessing these events one after the other. And this is how she got, the, she deserved the glad tiding from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that she will be rewarded with a, with a great palace house in uh, Al Jannah. So uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said, أمرت أن أبشر خديجة ببيت في الجنة من قصب لا صخب فيه ولا نصب. So Sayyid Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said I was ordered to give glad tidings to Khadija رضي الله عنها. May Allah be pleased with her. So what is the glad tidings about a palace of jewels in paradise? wherein there would be no noise, no toil, or no fatigue. She will be happy ever after. She is the mother of the believers who supported Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all the time, all the time. And we know how she uh, was strong in faith, how she was strong in uh, determination that she is doing what pleases Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She's doing what pleases Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And she supported Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until, until she passed away. And that was, that was very, very 
uh, sad time. It happened the same at the same time of after the death of Sayyidina, uh, of uh, the uncle of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Muslims uh, and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, lost a very strong support to him, his uncle. And of course, that was the outer support. Mm -hmm. And when Khadija radiallahu anha passed away, she was the inner support for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Khadija radiallahu anha was the mother of the believers. She loved everyone. She cared about everyone. And she passed away. And subhanAllah, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about her, Khayrun nisa'i fi zamaniha. She was the best woman in her time. And he also said, Khayrun nisa'i fi jannah The best woman in paradise. He said also, Amanat bi is kafara bi al-nas. She believed in me when people did not believe in me. And she, she believed in me when, when people belied me. So she was hand in hand with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her uh, gave Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all his children from her, all six of them. Of course, there is one from uh, another one. So this was uh, Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha. This is, this is what we are mentioning now. It's just a few points about the life of Sayyida Khadija. But we are to think about these points and we are to think about the lessons that we can get from these points. And of course, Khadija radiallahu anha raised his children. And what, which children? The, the most honorable woman in, at that time. Zainab radiallahu anha, Fatima radiallahu anha, Ruqiya radiallahu anha, Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha. So Zainab radiallahu anha is the third person that the third woman whom we are going to talk about now. So we talked about the mom. Now, we will see a few points about the, the, the daughter who was raised by the great mom. So talking about the mom and the daughter is what we want to focus on in, in, our, uh, in our life here. This is what we want to focus on. There should be great moms to raise great children. This is what we want. So raising, as we mentioned, as we mentioned last week, we have to pay a lot of attention to raising the girls because they will be the moms of this of, of, of the uh, generations. So a mom always uh, raise the, the, the second generation. And when she is a good person, then this second generation will be good with the help of Allah and the, the help of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when, when following the uh, rules of raising the children. So now 
talking about the daughter of this great mom. So we know that it wasn't easy for, uh, it wasn't an easy life that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had with his family. Quraysh did their best to torture the Muslims. And we know that uh, Zainab radiallahu anha uh, got married to someone whose name was Abul Has. And he was not a Muslim when there was no Islam. But at that time, when Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was revealed to, then she had to leave her husband because he is not. He is not a Muslim and he did not want to be a Muslim. So, subhanAllah, she tried her best to call him to Islam, to, uh, to make him abandon worshipping the idols. His cousin was Uthman ibn Affan. His other cousin was Az-Zubayr ibn al-Awwam. And you know, all these names are of the pioneers who became Muslims, but he did not. And he did not want to leave the, worshipping the idols. So, subhanAllah, so what happened uh some some of these things got into her and she she felt that she has to leave him she cannot be with him so she was but she was still so faithful to him and it was uh zainab at that time uh, uh on the uh, 14th year of the of the revelation uh the muslims started uh started to see something that uh she 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 saw that everyone everyone left even the daughters of Sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they left they left also ruqiya um kulthum fatima they all left to to Medina, and they left their uh, their sister Zainab in Mecca. She was alone. She was uh, very sad. She the only thing she could do is that she was praying to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now it was the second year of Hijrah that uh, the Battle of Badr happened. And the husband, Zainab's husband, fought against the Muslims in, in, the, in the, the Battle of Badr. They fought against them. And he was captured. So when Zainab knew that, she sent a pendant that she had. It was given to her from her mom that... Uh, Khadija radiallahu anha and it was given to her as a gift from her mom so when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was uh, checking who are the uh, uh, captives and uh, how their uh, families are ransoming them so he saw the, the uh, uh, pendant of his wife with the money that is being given to ransom the the captive and who was the captive it was his son-in-law and when he saw that pendant he was very he he got emotion he got emotional so he said to the muslims if you want if you want to to free him and send her uh her money then that's fine if not it's it's okay they said, oh, yes, Ya Rasulullah. So they sent her husband back. SubhanAllah. 
so many things, uh, years passed and Zainab came to, to Medina and Abu al came to Mecca. SubhanAllah, until one day something happened and he was uh, going with the, uh, with the group and uh, uh, taking the uh, uh, trading for the for the uh, for Quraysh and uh, he was very successful and he was uh, he didn't want to become a, uh, yani he didn't want to say at that time that he is a Muslim because he wanted to go back and give Quraysh their money so they said to him he said when they, when he came back to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Sayyidina Muhammad an abduhu wa rasuluh." So I didn't want them to think that I will uh, not give the money for them. So I gave them the money and went out. And Abu, Abu Al Has became a Muslim, and his wife, his faithful wife was so happy that her husband became a Muslim. So this is, this is the love relationship between the wife and the husband. It's a great bond that nothing can separate it. Now you see the, the uh, uh, relationships nowadays between husbands and wife, they are so shaky. First of all, they were uh, based on falling in love, falling, in, falling, going down. But when the uh, relationship between the husband and a wife is based on the teachings of Islam, the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wasallam, it raises up. So again, the, the lesson of this story is to, to have a good relation with the husband. A husband-wife relationship is, is a very important relationship. With this relationship, either you can uh, help your children who are the next generation, or you can destroy them. If the, if the marriage relationship between the husband and the wife is not good, is not strong, then the whole house will be shaky. There won't be values. There won't be teachings of Islam passed from one generation to the other. The first generation where the mother and the father will not be as models for their children. So it's it's way more beyond than uh, just a husband-wife relationship. It's a very strong bond that is crowned with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that all this uh, uh, love is passed down to the children who will be raised to be strong. Muslims who will be proud of being Muslims. This is what Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha, this is how she raised their, her children. And this is how, how Zainab radiallahu anha, how faithful she was to her husband, how loving she was to her husband. She saw her mom being the most loving, the most caring to her husband and to the family. And this is how she, she followed the steps of her mom. And we, in turn, want to follow the steps of our mother of believers, Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha. So these are the three uh, uh, female companions around the Prophet of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And inshallah, we will be able to follow them. We will be able to follow their footsteps. We will be able to, to make them 
and we will we are proud of having them as our models inshallah and until we meet next week inshallah i pass my salam and your salam to our beloved prophet sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh